In this video, what I want to do is I want to talk about the normal distribution. I view the normal distribution as one of the main topics that we're going to talk about in the semester, if not the most important topic. And the idea with the normal distribution is that we're going to have some sort of a scenario, some sort of a, um, a system or some sort of a measurement, some data set that's going to be normally distributed, meaning it'll follow the normal distribution. And so what we mean by that is that if, if you kind of imagine the standard bell curve, um, and so this is going to be symmetric and it's going to look something like something like that uh, and this is going to go all the way off to negative infinity it'll asymptote at the uh, on the horizontal axis and likewise that'll get closer and closer to zero never quite getting there this is going to be symmetric about this line okay in that line it's supposed to be a line ipad so that line is called the mean, um, or rather the value that the line's at is called the mean. So this would be um, at the value mu. And so the mean is gonna tell you, um, just like the mean does in, in uh, uh, chapter three, when we talked about mean, median, and mode, it tells you what's the average. If you add up all the values and you take the average, um, it turns out it's gonna be right there. So that's the mean. And the standard deviation, so mu, is the mean, this is a Greek M or mu. And then sigma is a standard deviation. And just like when we talked about the standard deviation for the binomial distribution or even the standard deviation for some sort of a sample, the standard deviation is gonna tell you how spread out your data is. On average, how far is your value that you're picking um, from the mean? So these are the two parameters that are gonna be useful for telling us about the normal distribution. And if we have a normal distribution with mean mu and with standard deviation sigma, we denote it by n of mu. And then it's not the standard deviation that goes in the second uh, component, it's the variance. So it's the standard deviation squared. So that's the gist of the normal distribution is that what we're doing is the probability that we're gonna get some value is modeled by this function and so we're more likely, if we just randomly pick a value, we're more likely to pick a value close to the mean than we are to pick a value far from the mean. Okay, so, and that's what this is gonna tell you. This is the probability of getting a value at any, uh, at any given X value. So this is the probability of picking any particular X value. So that's what this is gonna do. This normal distribution has, um, just in case anyone has taken Calc 2, this is a completely optional, this is an aside really, um, but there's an actual function that this is following. And this is one over sigma, square root of two pi, e to the negative one half quantity, x minus mu over sigma squared. And you really don't need to worry at all about this formula, except um, I just want you to know that it's there. Okay, so that is um, called the probability density function. And let's make it so we can see it here. So that's the probability density function of the normal distribution. And so for various uh, values of mu and sigma, you get a slightly different looking normal distribution. So um, all I really wanna do in this video is just introduce the idea of a normal distribution. Really, I wanna introduce the idea of a continuous distribution. And so what that means is that there's gonna be some process that we're modeling or something that we're studying um, often um, one of the first examples that we'll do actually is uh, IQ. And the idea with any sort of a normal distribution is that instead of having a prescribed set of values, what we're saying is that you can pick literally any value in some range or, or in this case from negative infinity to infinity. And so that's the difference between a discrete versus a continuous distribution. So a discrete distribution was like the binomial theorem where say you flip a coin five times and then you wanna count the number of heads you can have exactly six options, zero, one, two, three, or five heads. For a normal distribution, it's gonna be some scenario where you can really, in general, for a continuous distribution, you're gonna be studying scenarios where you can take any value in some range. You can have 3.14159265 as your value that you're gonna get out, right? You could have whatever value you want in a range. It's not a prescribed set of values. So that's why we call it a continuous distribution versus a discrete distribution. And for the binomial distribution, uh, so all that we had was, you wanted to talk about the probability that you could have 
zero, one, two, three, four, or five. I just made this up. This is not a good binomial distribution. But you just have those six possibilities. Here you have infinitely many possibilities because each point on the curve represents um, it's corresponding to some x value that can that can occur for your probability. So uh, for a continuous distribution here, there's infinitely many possibilities. For discrete, you had um, a finite number of possibilities. So that's really the, the big difference there. And I'm slightly oversimplifying, but I think this gets the, the point across. So what we need to talk about is how do we talk about probabilities with a normal distribution? So before what we could do, if we had a probability, say with a binomial distribution, is you can add up each of the probabilities. In our case, we're gonna add up something else. If you've seen calculus before, um, what, what we're really gonna do is we're gonna take integrals. And so the way that I wanna think about this, let me draw, let me copy this curve here. So the way that I wanna think about this is I wanna think about this in terms of area. Okay, so I want to think about this in terms of area. So if I want to figure out the probability that our random variable is going to have some values between a and b, well, what we do is we find a and b, and then we think about what's the area under the curve from a to b. And that area under the curve is going to be our, that area is going to be how we interpret this as a probability question. So the probability that a randomly selected value will be between A and B is the area under the curve uh, from A to B. Okay, so again, it's this light blue area. And again, this is an integral. So if you've seen calculus, this is really just the integral from A to B. Now, continuous distributions have two properties. So you can talk about a continuous distribution really for any function that you want, as long as the function has two properties. And the first is that you want all of the values of your function to be greater than or equal to zero. So you want f of x to be greater than or equal to zero for all x. And two is you want the total area under the curve. So you want the total area under the curve. In other words, the improper integral, again, if you're taking calculus, you want the total area under the curve uh, should be one. And as long as both of those criteria are met, then you have a, an example of a continuous distribution. So you could have all sorts of continuous distributions. There's tri triangular distributions where you have uh, like triangles here. Okay, so that's creatively called a triangular distribution. And again, as long as this is your function, as long as it's on or above the horizontal axis, and as long as the total area under the curve, uh, in our case, um, as long as this orange uh, area here is one, then it's a, a probability distribution function and it's fine. Um, you could also have uh, what's called a uniform distribution where you have, say, some rectangle from A to B. And then the height here has to be one over B minus six, that's the value that you have to pick in order for the total area of the rectangle to be one. Because the width, the width of this rectangle would be B minus A. So therefore the height has to be one over B minus A in order for the area to be one. So these are both examples of continuous distributions. Uh, and again, the main idea I just wanna get across is how these work. And we're gonna think about uh, we're going to think about probabilities in terms of areas. So one of the things that we're going to have to contend with is that um, we need to talk about how can we find the area. Clearly, if we're not going to do any calculus, we need to talk about some way that we can evaluate the area or at least estimate it. Um, and so we'll figure out how to do that. There's going to be two ways. We'll use a table uh, and we'll use R. And so we'll talk about each of those ways in the next video.